This is one of the world's most notorious prisons. There are almost no pictures of its exterior and none from inside. And what happens within its walls is cloaked in secrecy. Until now. We've devised a unique way of revealing what life is like inside a torture prison. And we've done it by talking to people who were there and have survived its horrors. And using their recollections and the testimony of others, we've built an interactive 3D model which can take you for the first time inside Signaya. In a unique collaboration, Amnesty International has teamed up with Forensic Architecture of Goldsmith, University of London, to reconstruct both the sound and architecture of Sydney Prison, and to do it using cutting-edge digital technology to create our model. This spoke-shaped building lies 30 kilometers north of the capital, Damascus. It's impossible to know how many people have been incarcerated here. But one thing is clear. Since the beginning of the Syrian crisis in 2011, tens of thousands of people have been detained or disappeared by President Assad's government in a network of prisons like this one around the country. More than 15,000 have died in custody. What is going on literally behind closed doors are crimes against humanity, systematic torture, widespread abuses, thousands of people who've died in the custody of the Syrian government since 2011. In order to, to understand this whole world that is this prison, we have to only rely on the memory of the people who have been there. Memory is the only resource within which we can start to reconstruct what has taken place. What does it feel like to be a prisoner inside Naya? Salam Othman, a lawyer from Aleppo, arrested for organizing peaceful protests in September 2011. Two years, five months in Sednaya. The model can take the user through both solitary confinement cells, group cells, to give a sense of how the uh, detainees lived. It also allows you to navigate the internal structure of the prison and to hear in a recreated way some of the sounds that they would have experienced. For most prisoners, Sidnaya was the end of a journey that has taken them through numerous detention facilities, where they often had to sign confessions under extreme torture. Jamal Abdu, a community worker from Damascus, arrested for helping civilians displaced by the crisis in 2012. One year, five months in Sidnaya. أنا كنت شخص ما حملت سلاح على النظام أنا كنت متظاهر سلمي كنت أنظم المظاهرات. One by one, they sat down with our 3D computer modeler and sound specialist to return to the darkest of places. And through their painful memories, forensic architecture pieced together each detail to build a whole picture. Anas Hamado, a farmer from Latakia arrested for attending a peaceful protest in March 2011. One year, three months in Sednaya. Of 
بحيث يكون منحني على الارض بحيث ما يجلس ظهره ابدا يكون منحني يعني هيك الجسم والراس قريب الى الارض هو عم بيمشي torture under interrogation has perhaps been confined to the past that's uh, the intelligence agencies that have been doing that and what we've heard about the situation in Sydney is that the torture there is more just of a punishment حطونا بالغرفه اعطونا تعليمات انه ما بصير يطلع صوت ما بصير حدا يحكي ممنوع كل شيء ممنوع تشوف نومك بامر وفيتك بامر واكلك بامر ودخولك على الحمام بامر وسكروا الباب ورانا طبعا هن وقت سكروا الباب نحن يعني في شعور من الصدمه والوهله الاولى يعني في رعب انه نحن وين overall everything about sydney prison serves to destroy the detainee the conditions and they are horrendous conditions the torture and there are a range of torture techniques particularly beatings but also then acts of cruelty and humiliation that detainees face on a daily basis. People come out broken if they come out at all. تلقائيا ما بيدك يعني طبعا خلال هي الفتره اللي كنا فيها عم نتعاقب تحت امام المفردات في دم كثير كان بالارض في رائحه زنخه ودم طبعا بالخارج كان في حاله من الهدوء التام ما في صوت نهائي حاله من السكون التام يعني احيانا صوت نقاط من الماء عم تزرب من السقف دياب سيري ان اكتيفيست فروم دمشق arrested for criticizing the government in March 2006. Five years in Sydney. Sydney is a matter of peace and peace. There is a new peace. The people can't be able to speak the truth. They can't be able to speak the truth. Any person who can speak the truth is a threat to the threat or the threat. In order to survive, prisoners developed an acute sense of hearing. These people are, are held in a constant state of alert because if they knew the guards were coming and they were sneaking up on them and they were prepared, it meant that they might survive by being in their positions. Even when they were not being tortured, Conditions in Sydney were exceptionally harsh for the inmates. There was extreme cold at night, a lack of medical care, the constant threat of disease, and not enough to eat. يعني كل فترة بتطلع الصور على السوشيال ميديا لناس فاتت على هذا السجن كان وزنه 100 كيلو أو 110 كيلو طلعت 45 أو 40 كيلوغرام يعني. What people don't often realize is that many detainees have died because they've had completely treatable conditions. They've had a cut that's got infected. They've had a rash. They've had an ingrown toenail. And because they've faced a desperate lack of medical care, they've ended up dead. What we're trying to do with this effort is try to build the story of, of this prison and try to speak up for all these people who are still in there because this is not something that is finished. People are dying in Sydney prison still. They're being tortured there. They're also being tortured in a whole network of other detention facilities across Syria. The world needs to wake up and the world can take action and it can ensure that now that there are some form of stop-start peace negotiations, 
the, the whole issue of detention, detention practices, the abuses that are occurring in detention on a daily basis in Syria are prioritised, brought to the top of the agenda and something finally is done about it.